This is a tutorial for map and timing configuration for RaceJoy maps. This tutorial provides step-by-step -step information for loading, configuring, and certifying your course maps for RaceJoy tracking. The first step is to load in a KML or GPX path for your course. To load the path, navigate to the RaceJoy menu on your race dashboard, select map, and the load course map option for the course. Next, select from map actions the import map path option. There are many great map path making tools out there. We use Google Earth Pro, which is a free tool and provides for making course paths from any type of path, trail, on-road and off-road segments, etc. Map My Run, Plot a Route, and many other great map making tools all provide a way to export your path in KML or GPX format. RaceJoy supports loading the path from either format. RaceJoy imports the path and also provides for the GPS calculation and positioning of the mile markers. Later in this tutorial, we will discuss tools for you to set the mile positions based upon your course certification or course signage locations. This will provide for the most accurate progress alerts for your participants. For triathlon courses, you will need to import a single path that is a combination of the bike and run course path, all in one continuous path through the transition. We also support the import of the mile markers from an external file if they are named per our naming standard, as you will see in this tutorial. Drop the file in the window or browse to select your KML or GPX file. Next, select the Generate Markers to add GPS markers based on GPS measurement. You will adjust these positions later based on your course certification and signage. Next, select the Timing Configuration option. You will need to set the distance for each timing point you have designed on the course. Any location and distance can be a timing point on your path. Whatever markers you put in the start finish layer, the mile markers layer, or the audio markers layers will appear as possible timing points in your timing point configuration. The timing configuration supports the following options. Distance, this is the distance from the start to the point. A disable point option, which is a quick way to disable all timing at that point, no, no progress alerts, no pace alerts, etc. Set whether you want a progress alert notification to be issued at the point to spectators and participants. The audio pace option is available for those points where you do not want the participant to hear a split alert at that point. Later in this tutorial, we will see how this is used for cheer points and extra timing locations. The point radius is the proximity circle in meters to the marker location when the progress alert will fire. For most GPS, city, and weather conditions, the default of 60 meters will provide for optimal results under all these conditions. Later we will see a use case where this can be reduced. The progress board option is if you want the split point to show on the monitoring leader progress board and race joy monitoring on your dashboard. Check out our other video about monitoring and all the things available through race joy monitoring. We will come back to the exchange point and leg name fields later in this tutorial when we load a relay type course. For any course that is not a relay, set the course processing type to standard. Finally, the pace type should be set to the default of minutes per mile for running events and miles per hour for bike events. For triathlon events, set the bike points to miles per hour and the run points to minutes per mile. Now set the distance for each timing point. This is the total distance from the start to the given timing location. The same applies to triathlon courses in that this is the total distance along the combined bike run path from the overall start of the first bike run segment to that point on the combined course path. Select Save to save the timing point configuration and any changes you've made. This area can be updated at any time, including during the race, if you make a mistake in the configuration. The option on whether the course has a wave start just controls the time that we build into the missed start processing for race joy participants. If you have a race where the participant could start more than 90 minutes after the official gun time for the course, you should select this option when saving the timing configuration. Now we are ready to move to ensuring the timing point locations are in the correct location, latitude and longitude. You should place the mile, exchange, and timing split locations based on your official course certification or course signage. This provides for optimal and most accurate audio split alerts for participants. They will hear the alert as they move past your official mile locations. There are several tools for setting these positions. You can use Google Satellite Views on our map. 
and even use their street view tool as shown to move the mile markers to the correct location. Recall, the markers are set based on GPS measurement along your path by default when we generate. Another tool to move the marker until it matches the coordinates as provided by your course certification is to actually move the marker manually and see the coordinates. You can also type in the coordinates and select the Snap to Position option to move the marker to a provided set of coordinates from your course certification. Once you have certified the location of all the mile split timing points and any exchange points, you are ready to save the map and set the map as being certified. Please wait to set the course as certified until you have completed all your timing configuration and mile marker adjustments. Note, all courses must be in a certified state in order for the event to be live in RaceJoy for your participants and spectators. If any course is set to not certified, the event will be offline and not available in RaceJoy. Once you've certified that the path is accurate and the timing point configuration is complete, the check mark will appear and the map will be marked as certified. We have completed the requirements of loading course paths, completing their timing configuration, and certifying that the course is accurate and ready to be used on race day. Most courses will require just these simple steps to be completed. We will next review two very special use cases where extra timing locations will be required in order for race joy to work correctly. These are what we describe as the proximity path issue and the out and back issue. As we see in this course, both the proximity path issue and the out and back issue occur. Recall that the default proximity radius for detection for, for a passing was 60 meters in the timing configuration. And this section of the course is the out and back section that we'll also be looking at. Let's review the proximity path issue first. Google Earth is a great tool for assistance in measuring path issues. Just export our map from the RaceJoy dashboard under the Actions Export Action and load the map into Google Earth. The Circle Radius tool can be used to quickly look at the radius of proximity to a given milestone. The Line tool can also be used to measure a given segment. In this course, we see that participants will pass by on the first road prior to coming back around to mile four, and they pass within the radius of 60 meters. This would cause the mile four alert to fire as they pass down this road, prior to them coming back to the actual mile four on the other road. You have two options here. The first option is to set the timing point radius to a small number. We have found values down to 30 meters work fine. As long as you have the timing location set very precise, and the path that the participants travel past is not too wide. The second option is to add an intermediate timing point that they have to pass through prior to getting back to the mile split point. RaceJoy processes timing locations in sequence based upon the distance, so you can add an additional point they need to pass through in order for the mile four passing to occur. In this example, we can add a silent mile 3.9 point prior to mile four. To add an additional timing location, select the Draw mar Mode Marker and then the Add Marker action from the Google Map. Click on the map where you want the marker to be added and then change back to the Hand tool and then edit the properties of the marker. Recall that you need to put the marker into the, either the mile marker layer or the audio marker layer in order for it to be considered a timing point. Next, select the timing point configuration and set the distance for your new timing location. At this point, you can decide if you want the point to be silent or not. Turn off progress alerts and set the audio pace off if you want it to be a silent intermediate location. This is our typical configuration for points like these. Second is our out and back issue. In this course, participants pass by mile eight too soon. They need to run all the way down and back to mile eight prior to a valid passing for mile eight. For this issue, you have no option but to add the intermediate timing location. 
there is no way to set the proximity radius low enough for situations like this. Add the timing marker using the marker draw mode in the add marker tool. Set your distance and again select whether you want progress alerts or not at this point. If you're looking for an additional verification data point for course cutters, this is a great way to add a point that will show on your progress board in RaceJoy Monitoring, providing you another data point to verify a participant has ran the entire course, both from the RaceJoy progress board and addition in the route replay. In addition to setting up your course path for accurate progress alerts and tracking, you also have the capability to add geo-based cheers and messages along the course. Check out our other video on their timer area at the RaceJoy website under the Certified Timers page or on our RaceJoy YouTube channel, which provides in-depth information about geo-based cheers for your sponsors. For the purpose of this tutorial and timing configuration, we want to provide the details on how you add additional timing locations on your path for additional cheer points outside the standard timing locations. You can add geo-based cheer messages to any timing location. So for your existing timing locations, just select the marker and add any combination of a pre-recorded cheer clip, a message that will be converted to speech through text-to-speech technology, or a custom MP3 file that you've recorded, and it will be played as they pass through that timing location. Review our library cheer clips and you can add sound effects with messages that fit your race. You can also add messages that are informative about what a person is passing. We've seen great examples of historical and informal messages provided by race courses as participants pass milestones along their courses. We kindly ask that straight advertisement be avoided since it creates a negative experience for your race participants. Now suppose you need a geo-based message at a location that is not currently a timing location. In order to do this, you add an intermediate timing location as we've reviewed previously. Add the marker, and in this case provide a name like Cheer1 and then select the layer to be in the audio mile layer so that it will be considered a timing location. Next, select the timing configuration view and set the distance to that new location. For timing locations that are just delivering a cheer message, be sure to turn off the progress alert and turn on the audio pace off. After you've saved the distance information, go back to the new location on the map and set your cheer message you want played as participants pass that timing location along your course. For relay type courses, there's an additional timing configuration required. You need to set up the exchange locations and set the timing configuration for each exchange location. It is important to make sure the exchange locations are set accurately for when the relay participant will enter the transition area. This will provide for the most accurate experience for your participants. Set up the markers and put them in the start finish layer so they will be considered as timing locations. Next, open up the timing configuration view and set the course type to relay for relay type courses. Scroll down to your new exchange locations, set the total distance from the start of the race, and then select the exchange point option for each exchange location. Very important, you will need to set the finish as an exchange point. This is the end of the last leg and the final exchange point, signaling the end of the last leg of the relay. After you select save, you will see the default leg names appear. These are what participants will see in their RaceJoy app for selecting which leg they will be completing. You can override these names if needed, but the default of leg 1 through the last leg number works best for most relay races. RaceJoy provides a way to preview the map that mobile users will see in RaceJoy. This is a handy way to review the map prior to the event being certified and live in RaceJoy. We also provide a way for you to share links you can embed in race guides and online materials. There's also code for putting the map in an iframe on your website. The links are live links that will always show the current map you have edited for the race year and course. The links are specific to the course and the race year. You can also review any marker pop-up content, sponsor logos, and sponsor links you add to the markers on this map preview. See the marker edit for these additional marker properties. This concludes the tutorial for map and timing configuration for RaceJoy maps. Thank you for your support and attention to providing quality maps and timing experiences for your races.